Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, my partner John Cohen and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Liz Lister. Uh, Dr. Liz is a font of information for us on all subjects medical and beyond. Yes. Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise. Thank you. So, Dr. Liz, I keep hearing about concierge medicine, mm. and, and my um, health system, not insurance, but the, I'm a member of a huge, um, they, you know, they own hospitals, they've got 100 doctors groups, and they're all over San Diego County. Um, they, they put you online every chance they get, and they really don't want anybody coming into the office uh, unless right. you need a, a test or something. So right. is that concierge medicine? It can be, but not necessarily. What you're talking about is what we now call telehealth. Okay. Telehealth, yeah, which has become huge since the pandemic. I've been sure. doing telehealth since way before. However, lots and lots of doctors and medical practices have discovered it since the pandemic because it's so convenient. Sure, for everybody. For everyone, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what's, the, what is what is what is concierge medicine? What's the difference? Well, if you think about a concierge in a building or a hotel, for example, what you've got is somebody who is personally dedicated to taking care of a small group of people. So, for example, a hotel concierge would be someone who t is taking care of those hotel guests, mm. right? Right. And that's where you can think about concierge medicine being a shift in how a lot of doctors are practicing. It usually includes the doctor moving away from doing everything through insurance. Yeah. So typically when you hear concierge medicine, the has a lot of advantages for both sides. Uh, the doctor gets to really focus on their patients the patient can expect a really quick personal reply from the doctor. All right, so that's that concierge, close taking care environment. So you can kind of picture it that way. Yeah. Well, some Is of our, some of our some of our audience uh, may be familiar, and I uh, uh, don't remember the name of the show. Maybe one of the two of you do. On TV, there was for two or three seasons, there was a a young doctor who was a concierge doctor and uh, he would go out to his wealthy clients not not right. on not the poor and the deprived but the wealthy uh, clients on uh the south shore long island and manhattan and he provided uh one-on-one -on -one services to them uh so that uh, right. unlike urgent care uh this was uh, we come to you or uh and yes. we uh, only deal with the more uh well-heeled clients is that kind of the world of concierge medicine? That is another variation. Concierge medicine does not necessarily mean house calls. Mm. It might include that, but not necessarily. What they have in common is usually something like a fee, either a monthly or a yearly fee, where you can also describe it as a membership. Mm. Okay. So again, we're getting back to that hotel or even a club type of environment. It allows the doctor to really pay closer attention to his or her patients because they don't have this huge panel of even thousands of patients. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of doctors do a combination. So some doctors I'm aware of are doing general medicine or whatever their specialty is through insurance. However, they have, I, I'm familiar, a, a friend of ours who's a doctor is doing this and he just has a small panel of concierge patients who, and this is on the pricier side, even for Silicon Valley where I am, but he, he still sees patients on insurance, but he also has a very, very small group of patients who are paid $25,000 per year membership fee. And he's just available to them 24 seven. Right. So, so the advantage obviously, for example, uh, is that you can call the doctor up pretty much at any time and anytime. Yeah, exactly. A quick reply, quick appointments, uh, quick questions that get answered. 
it's it's a lot of fun. It's very gratifying for me to be able to answer really quick questions, uh, either through text or a quick email. Yeah. So it speeds up the turnaround time, which is very satisfying on both sides. I can imagine. And so I, how big a deal, how big a deal is this? Uh, how many accounts are uh, doctors or services? Maybe there's a small group of a, a few together, or is this an all in individual practice kind of thing? You know, How many it's are there usually, in the US? That is a very good question. The numbers, of course, are growing. The It's usually individual doctors who are creating a concierge practice each on their own. However, there are a couple of hospital systems, to your point, John, that you were talking about, who are developing a concierge side of the practice. Okay, and it's important to remember that even if you're a member of a concierge practice, you still need your medical insurance. We're not. This is, this is not covering if you need a hospitalization or you need a surgery or you need a, some type of some type of procedure done. Okay, this is the doctor's services primarily. Sometimes it'll include some blood work or some kind of testing that can be done at the doctor's office. But if you need hospital care or some other larger procedure, then it you still need your medical insurance. So that's important uh, to keep in mind. Yeah. Well, compared to $25,000 a year, medical insurance is nothing. Well, and then, of course, I mean, some people charge as little as $1,000 a year, for example. I'm trying to think if I'm aware of anyone charging less than that. Not really. That would be kind of a minimum. That's less than $100 a month mm. to have that membership, those membership benefits and that increased access to the doctor and their staff. The, the additional items are going to be that you need your insurance for are going, like I said, if you need a hospital surgery or something like that, any kind of hospital stay, you're going to need your medical insurance for sure. So yeah. it doesn't take the place of that but it gives the increased personal attention from the doctor. So it seems yeah. as if um, uh, when I was growing up, uh, and I still call my wonderful uh, a personal, a primary doctor, I don't know what the primary doctors or family doctors, I used to call them GP, general practitioner. That's where right. you went, if you, you got sick. And then they sort of got, um, a, not eclipsed, but uh, a competition by uh, urgent cares, uh, where, uh, when you have the same staff there all the time, it's almost like going to your own uh, GP, except you maybe see one of several different doctors if you go in. So, um, so, but the, uh, a concierge seems to be something like Club, club Med, uh, where you have a personal yeah. G, a personal GP on call, essentially twenty four seven. And if you can afford it, it's great because I like Dr. Fernandez. Um, and yeah, it'd be, be nice to call from time to time to ask him about, you know, uh, this little guy up here. Well, I know what that came from because I got something burned off by my dermatologist. Thank you very much every six months. Uh, but uh, uh, so this is, a, is this a, a, a large segment? How, how many people uh, employ uh, concierge doctors, do you think? I do not know. I don't know what the statistics are at this point, but I just know that it's growing. A lot of doctors, a lot of shifts happen during the pandemic. Uh, it's difficult to run a private solo practice with insurance. It's based on volume. And that's where you have the doctors who have very little time to spend with their patients. It's also a design set up on expecting people to not show up for appointments. So the overbooking and the wait times, that's kind of the, unfortunately, the insurance model, uh, because otherwise you can't stay afloat. You can't pay the bills for rent and staff and all the things that you have to do to run a medical practice. So a lot of doctors are, I mean, especially where I am, it's very popular, uh, executive health, uh, in fact, that's been around for a really long time in some of the bigger systems where, and this is not exactly concierge medicine, but it's related to do, for example, an executive physical where you're going to go to a clinic for two days and you're going to get everything done. You're going to get your blood, you're going to show up, you're going to get your blood work, your mammogram, any other types of screening tests, 
and then you're going to have other EKG, treadmill, all types of different tests. And then by the next day, you're getting all the results and you're getting your treatment plan. So it's very efficient. As you said, at the moment, you know, the way we do medicine in the United States at this point in time, we do not have health care for all. We're working on that. Medicare is good. Medicare is, of course, for everyone over 65. And we also know that Medicare doesn't cover everything. So it's becoming more popular. I do not know the numbers right now. I just know that it's growing. Yeah. Well, this is good information. Helps. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Um, it's always good to have a perspective on the world of medicine from the client's point of view. So we we understand what's happening, what we can get, what we can't get. Yeah, it can be very confusing, particularly with the insurance companies. Well, so no question you. in my no question in my mind that. Uh, uh, when John starts paying me a lot more money, uh, only a part part of what I'm worth, when I have enough money for a concierge doctor, Dr. Liz, you're my person. You're my doctor. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.